Hey, hello, and welcome to this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. Sitting here in the living room on a cold Thursday, a not a cool front, but an Arctic front just blew in and it's going to be blowing in. Uh, the temperature yesterday was maybe a high of 55 degrees, but tonight it's going to get down to about 18, maybe 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's going to stay below freezing for more than 24 hours. So it's cold. I got the heat on and uh, trying to stay warm. But um, before I jump into the video, you know, there's three things you can do for me. You like the video, two, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from these videos too, just like you. Okay, we got something a little bit different today, too. We're going to be talking about uh, something musical and a musical instrument. And um, it's called a penny whistle or a tin whistle. Here's a, uh, an example of a tin whistle or a penny whistle. And it's a, uh, something, I guess, came originated in Ireland or Ireland. Ireland, and it's a, uh, they call it tin whistle because a lot of times they were made out of tin. See, it has six holes, and you play it the top the three fingers of my left hand, uh, top six ho three holes, I play with my left hand, the bottom three holes I play with my right hand. And typically, uh, the standard whistle is called a high whistle like this. And it's in the key of D. It's in the key of D. So each whistle is in a specific key. So they have um, whistles in D. Here's a whistle, for example, in the key of C. It's a little bit bigger than the D whistle. And also have a whistle in the key of B flat, which is even bigger. And also, they have whistles that are called low D whistle, low Ds, so it's in a lower octave, and they're much bigger, as you can see. This is a low D whistle, and this is a, another low D whistle, so I'll sh also show, show you how these sound, but here's a D whistle, it's, it's, and it, you can play it in two octaves, two octaves. That's a D whistle. Here's a C whistle. You can hear the different key. Here's a B flat whistle. For comparison, here is the low D whistle. Listen how lower, how much lower this is. And this has a different fingering to it, so it takes a little getting used to. So that's the low D. So they're kind of fun to play. It's a long story. I started maybe trying to play the tin whistle probably almost 15 years ago. This was before the internet was really booming or big. And I remember I, I ordered a book on from a, uh, I guess a store. I bought a book at the bookstore, how to play tin whistle. It came with a, I think a CD. And I could put that in my CD player and but it was kind of difficult because in the whistle 
Irish, also called Irish whistle, tin whistle. There's a lot of ornamentations to make the tune sound uh, more fancy or fancier. But it's very difficult for me to understand. Um, but now, you know, there's a lot of resources on the internet especially, so I found a good uh, tin whistle or Irish whistle course online, and I'm going through that. I haven't been playing the tin whistle very long, maybe only two or three months. Like I said, I tried 15 years ago. I played for a little while, maybe eight months. Then I stopped, and I hadn't played again, but I decided now that I'm retired, along with Spanish, I said, well, it's time to learn a new instrument. So I've been uh, learning to play this, and my brother plays a guitar, so sometimes we meet. We can kind of play together. He was trying to learn the uh, Irish uh, bazooki or Irish tenor guitar, so we, he can play along with me. And he likes Irish music uh, as well. Let me give you a little information about the tin whistle, though. Sometimes it's called the tin whistle, or sometimes it's called the penny whistle, or Irish whistle. It was, uh, it's a six-hole uh, woodwind instrument, so it has a metal body. This is made out of brass, and this has a plastic mouthpiece. I think this is made out of uh, probably aluminum, aluminum, brass. Here's another uh, high D whistle, aluminum, I think, plastic mouthpiece. This low D is interest, interesting because this is made out of aluminum, but the mouthpiece is aluminum as well. So with anything, uh, with instruments, you get what you pay for. I don't know if you heard that expression, you get what you pay for. But they're not very expensive, and it's a... Um, I think the rumor has it, maybe it was true back in the day when the whistle was first... Uh, made or available they were very cheap and i think you could probably get them for a penny that's why they're called a penny whistle but the you can buy penny whistles today maybe for about 10 bucks you can start playing a tune this is one walton it's a brand name i think you can get this for maybe 15 bucks some of these generation this is a generation brand this is an oak brand they're not very expensive maybe 10 to 15 dollars and you got you an instrument that's portable you can put it in your pocket put it in a purse put it in a uh, briefcase a backpack and you can take several of them along with you to play in different keys and uh, you're making music and like anything else there's a learning curve and like anything else just like learning english it's a, uh, a practice 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 makes perfect so when you're learning an instrument, I found it's just like learning a language. You got to be consistent, and you have to put in the time. You know, Rome wasn't built overnight. And some more information. Sometimes they're called a fipple flute. If you've heard of a recorder, I remember when I was in grade school, elementary school, we all had to play the recorder, or the Native American flute is kind of in the same um, family, you could say. Um, and it's used to play Irish traditional music or Celtic music in Ireland. And the modern penny whistle is indigenous to or native to Great Britain and Ireland. It was produced, first produced or factory made by a guy named Robert Clark from 1840 to 1889 in Manchester, England. And the finger is similar to a six-hole Irish flute, so any of you play the flute flute is played this way, but the whistle is played like this. So here in the United States, uh, I guess in, even in uh, Europe, we call this a whistle. But uh, some friends of mine from Mexico say there's really no, this is not, wouldn't be called a whistle or silbato or whatever, but it would probably be called a flauta, a flute. But here in the U.S., I know we, we call it a whistle. Let's see, usually the, the original Clark whistle was made of rolled tin, sheets of tin, which is a type of metal, or brass, which I think this is brass. And it was considered a toy by a lot of people. They say, hey, this is just something for kids to play around with or to mess around with and to play. It wasn't really taken very seriously, but I'm really shocked if you look at a lot of the good uh, tin whistle players uh, 
from Ireland or around the world, especially Brian Finnegan, Ross uh, Ainsley. Guys can play. They're just, it's amazing what they can do with a whistle. Maybe I'll have some links to some of their videos down below. Because, um, and it was called a penny whistle, like I said, because you could buy it for a penny. But today, most whistles are made out of brass, or sometimes they're nickel plated, nickel over brass. And um, I think this whistle here, this low D is nickel plated. It's brass, the metal is brass, but nickel, we say plated on top of the brass, there's the metal nickel is put on top of it. So we call that nickel plated on top. And also there's some whistles that are made out of PVC, which is a type of plastic. There are also whistles made out of wood and aluminum, like I said. But the first mass producer was a Clark company and then the generation whistle this is the brand name called generation i guess they made it uh very popular and they came out in 1966 and it's called a diatonic um, instrument diatonic because it can be played in two major keys so for example this whistle that's in the key of d i can play it in d and i can also play it in the key of g D and G, so it's called a diatomic, diatonic instrument. And during the 1960s revival of traditional Irish music, the low whistle, which is the big type of whistle, was recreated by a gentleman by the name of Bernard or Bernard Overton. So these became more popular back in the 1960s. And like I said before, you can play them in two octaves and you can make ornamentations on them. And ornamentation is, instead of playing I can play And sometimes these whistles, you need to, they need to warm up, especially the metal instrument. Sometimes you I place my finger over the hole here and blow. Help warm up the whistle. So like I said, I've only been playing um, maybe a couple months, so it takes a w long time to kind of get used to the fingering, moving your fingering, blowing, changing the octaves. But I'm going to try to play you a tune or two so you can hear out sounds. This is called the Swallow Tail Jig. a basic jig. Let me see if I can add some ornamentation. Here's a, another song called the Foggy Dew. It's a foggy dew. Now I'm going to play, uh, hear the low whistle, see how it sounds.
Here's Amazing Grace. So that's the uh, low whistle and the called the high whistle, and um, I guess that's all I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I got a long way to go, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, check it out on YouTube. Check out some of these uh, Irish tin whistle players. Like I said, Brian Finnegan, Ross Ainsley. All right. Hope you liked that video. Learned a few things new. Again, hey, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it. All right, well, that's about it. I'm going to try to stay warm and cozy. We say cozy here in the house. And we'll talk to you later from Learn Everyday English. Hey, see you later. Goodbye.